Real estate agents, are you struggling with the day-to-day -day grind, dialing for dollars, putting in hours of floor time with little to show for it? Are you looking for tips, tricks, and tactics to accelerate your career as an agent that will have you closing more homes, working with more clients, and earning more money than ever before? Hi, my name is Cliff Freeman, and I've spent the past two decades of my real estate career running one of the top brokerages in DFW and personally coaching over a thousand high-performing real estate professionals across North America. I created this podcast to share the strategies and the tactics you need to explode your real estate business. I guarantee it. All right, welcome everybody. How you doing out there this afternoon? Goodness gracious, Trelvis, welcome to you, sir. How hey, are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh Cliff? man, we just killed it, having a great week, and uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's uh, it's been fun. Yes, I, I think I, I went back to my allergist, got the cough fixed, so we're not going to have that. Uh, okay, so we won't have a you cough. Don't have to, you don't have to worry about that, right? right? None of that problem. And hey, by the way, I have a. In, in addition to, I'm I'm super stoked to have here today, and we're going to hear from our uh, million dollar uh, producer uh, and team leader, Patricia Katiki. She's up in Victoria, British Columbia. She's going to be coming in live here in just one second. And, uh, boy, it's amazing. Uh, Travis, we're going to learn how she's uh, been able to double her business every year for the past three years. And uh, I'm telling you what, this, uh, this, this agent is somebody that you really want to stay around and meet. Unbelievable talent and team up in uh, kind of the west side of uh, Canada up there, up near uh, uh, Bellingham, Washington, which okay. is near the headquarters of our brokerage. Nice. By the way, I want to introduce everybody. Uh, this may be the first time that you've seen this face on uh, our show here, but uh, we've got my son, Cliff Freeman III, affectionately known as C3, because I'm C2, he's C3. And I want to welcome you to the show. Super stoked that you're here today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Travis, I, he was out, uh, you know, he's he, he hits the golf sticks around a little bit <laughs> and uh, played a little college golf. And, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, he had the opportunity. Uh, let's see, you got out on a pretty nice track last uh, Tuesday, two days ago, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Where were you playing? Yeah, I got the opportunity opportunity to play at a place called Preston Trails, and uh, really nice. it's definitely one of a kind. And I had the honor to play with uh, Grace Bridge, which is a charity nonprofit, and uh, they do a lot of work for children around the United States. And I thought it was a, a great benefit to be able to hang out with them and spend some time with uh, that caliber of a person. Yeah, so, and actually, cool. you, you bumped into somebody coming out of the restroom in there, right? Who was that? Yeah, <laughs> bumped shoulders with Lee Trevino. Lee Trevino, cool, man, yeah. that's crazy. Lee Trevino, uh, Lee, who is he exactly? Oh, he's a, he's a pretty good old golfer from the Dallas area. Oh, you know? okay, really nice. He used to take a broom handle and a Coke bottle, and he'd tape the Coke bottle on the end of the broom handle and play for money out at Tennyson <laughs> Park, and he'd hit the ball with a Coke bottle, and uh, that's no kidding. That's great. All right, so audience out there, hey, listen, you want to stick around for the entire show because what I have for you for Cliff, Cliff's notes today is I've got this secret cheat sheet here and this has been key to my business and to my coaching business. What we're going to do is we're going to take you through uh, the importance of understanding someone's disc, disc profile and how you can use that knowledge to be able to close deals. Uh, this will be in the vault in Cliff's notes at the end of the show. I promise you, you're going to want to stick around and, and get the keys to unlock the vault so you can see that. But in the meantime, enough about that. I am just, like I said, so excited uh, and absolutely, and this is our first remote broadcast. This is the first time we're doing this internet. Not only is it remote, but it's international. And boy, look at there. And there's Patricia Katiki. Patricia, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. We're so excited to have you. Cliff, thank you for having me. I'm totally pumped to be here. And I'm really excited that I get to talk to you. Um, you've been a great uh, coach and mentor of mine for some time now. So I can attest to uh, to how much you like to help folks and, and give people the right tools to grow their business. So I'm really excited. Well, I can appreciate that. And, and you know, I, I went back and, and looked at my notes and I think that the first time you and I were ever on a coaching call together was back in May of 2016. Does that ring a bell? 
Something like that. Yeah, it does. It does. Holy, think, it seems it, like a lifetime ago. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, well, it gosh, time flies and uh, you have just you've done amazingly well. And as I was going through our notes on that first call, one of the first things that we talked about was the disc assessment. Uh, and personality profiling. And we're gonna get to that here in just a little bit. But uh, boy, you and I and, and your partner and, and, and uh, significant other, Greg, we have had just some really excellent times together. Uh, I'm so proud to have been a part of your business. I mean, you have, you have just totally been a coach's dream client. And I say that because you listen and you implement and you're really very coachable. And one of the benefits of that to people who are considering a coach is we, we kind of grade ourselves as coaches on the outcome and how much that's had an impact on your business. So let's take it back um, to when you and I first started. Um, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct and, and not losing my mind at this age, um, I think that we have pretty been pretty successful at doubling your business every year for the last three years. Is that, is that those numbers resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you're yeah. now you're now doing over a million dollars. Will you will you take us back a little bit and and you know when you decided to pursue a coach, you had a lot of things going. You were already a great independent agent with a with a local brokerage up there in in Victoria. Tell us what was going through your mind when you were just considering a coach and and why you were considering a coach. Yeah, that's I mean that's a great question. Um, so for me, I was already, you know, I had been doing real estate for a few years and <clears throat> yeah, you know, I was, I was kind of plugging along and having kind of moderate success, but I was hitting the same numbers and the same things year over year. So I wasn't really able to kind of like break through that ceiling or, or you know, get to the next level on my own. So it felt like, the, you know, no matter what I was doing, I was still hitting the same numbers year over year in some kind of variation. Maybe it was higher sales volume or, um, you know, a, a few more deals that year, but I wasn't really able to break through. And I wasn't able to create something that could work while I wasn't working. So it was still very much that treadmill of like, you know, I got to get out there and chase my month every single month. I, re I recall one of the challenges uh, initially with a lot of clients I work with is to get you off of that transaction treadmill and really start yeah. to put life back into life, right? I mean, you know, the balance of the five equities of life is really key to, to uh, you know, to your success. And, uh, you know, I, I just recall you were implementing systems. And I've always said, and I say this just about on every show, that in order to really crush it in this business, you've got to be uh, you've got to be really good at two things. And Patricia, you remember what these are. One is time management. You've got to be a ninja time manager, and you have done an exceptional yeah. job of that. And the second thing is, and Greg has helped a lot with this, is that you guys have implemented like ninjas. I mean, you guys have been the best implementers that I've ever seen. Talk a little bit, uh, if you would, share with the audience what we were able to create for you to, um, to generate uh, leads. And, and right now, we're generating hundreds of leads for you um, a month. Yeah. And how has that helped you grow your business? Well, so generating a large number of leads, you know, it enabled us to start reaching out and, and bringing people onto the team. And it enabled us to start sharing what we had built with other agents who maybe were kind of stuck on their own transaction treadmill. So when we were generating more leads than we, you know, than I could personally handle as a solo agent, um, then it made sense to actually go out and start hiring people and bringing people on board to help and creating that leverage so that it wasn't just, you know, me and my own efforts or, you know, me and Greg's efforts anymore. It was starting to become a little company at that point. Right. Well, it, a little company. So what comes with building a little company is you, uh, you know, you, you've got more business to handle. You now are, you know, transitioning out of, you know, just being a solo practitioner into a business owner, which means now you've got hiring, uh, you've got uh, uh, lead conversion issues. And we have, uh, okay. we've spent a great deal of time, effort and energy uh, on helping you guys become really at the top of your game. 
um, in lead conversion. Um, talk us, to us a little bit about what that journey has been through for you. I know that when we first got started, we, we had a, some stumbles because we just didn't know what we didn't know as a team until we got people on board. Right. But walk us through a little bit, if you would. I know that people out there in the audience would love to hear some of the some of the things that have happened. You've had, you had you, we, let's just face it, we've had some failures, but they really weren't failures. It was just opportunities for feedback. Can you talk a little bit about Learning that and how you, how you blew through it? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely um so i mean you know first off it you you use this term cliff all the time and i thought it was a really good term is you go from being a solo agent to kind of hitting this stage where you get a bit of messy middle because now you're you're you know a company owner you're a ceo you're trying to train other people show them how you do things and then at the same time you're also still general you know doing business uh, and working in the business as well so there's a lot of parts that go to that. Um, and I mean, you kind of brought up disc profile earlier, and I think that that's brilliant because the coaching uh, and the mentorship that we got with you really let us know what our key hires should be, what order we should be hiring these people in. Um, because I think a lot of the fear come too for people comes from like, oh my God, I've opened up these floodgates. I've got way more leads than I can handle. Now I've got to hire a bunch of people. Um, and so, you know, it was kind of, wading through the messy middle step by step and making sure like the right things were happening at the right times was really important. Um, and so, you know, making your, your crucial first hire, that's a, that was a really big step. It freed up so much time. Um, it, it allowed me to time block and really focus on, you know, get a whole bunch of, um, things off of my plate that, that were not the highest and best use of my time. And then focus on the things that were the highest and best use of my time while, you know, still selling real estate um, as well on a day to day. So every step of the way you learn that. So like every time you um, outgrow yourself a little bit, you could see that as a failure, but really it's an opportunity to level up. And if you figure that out fast enough, <laughs> and if you fail fast enough and more, you know, more times, um, then you can figure out where you need to level up, where you need to bring on help, what you need to automate, what you need to leverage and just push past it, push past it. That's it. Yeah. And, and boy, you're really good at pushing past it. So that first key hire that you made um, was at the administrative level. I mean, Tammy has yeah. been just amazing. And um, she has really, you know, when we look, you know, I think that I mentioned to you that when you first brought her on, I said, look, tell her this. I said, tell her, tell her you've got just enough money to, to pay her for the first 90 days. And if she doesn't <laughs> figure out a way to put another 10 hours in your calendar, that you're not going to be able to pay her after that and see how she does. And boy, she responded, mm -hmm. she got up and, and just started jamming and really taking things off your plate. And that was great. So that was a really big key hire. Um, what about on the yeah. sales side? Talk to us a little bit about how you've been able to build, now that you've got the operation side of it down, running like a well-oiled machine, how about the uh, the sales side? How's that working for you? Uh, yeah, well, and the sales side is a totally different beast. Um, so so the sales people have totally different challenges than uh, the, the admin's gonna have. Um, and sales people have to, you know, they've got the challenge of being in front of people and, and constantly being publicly facing. So I think that that's, it was, you know, really sh telling people, or sh not telling, but, you know, showing people how they could convert, how they could build stronger connections, how they could relate and gain a rapport with a large number of people. And I think for salespeople, the biggest challenge is how to balance life with, um, you know, constantly needing to pick up the phone, constantly needing to be there for people, but then also having to time block time in their schedule to follow up, you know, make sure you're making a, the right amount of contacts per week, make sure you're not wasting your time showing a whole bunch of house, houses to people who haven't been properly pre-qualified. Um, you know, and, and as salespeople, we tend to be like fire marshals. We just want to get out there, get get things going really quickly. And, you know, it's, it's a reminder that, yeah, you got to be quick but you also got to take a minute and do things properly so that you can fit all your key activities into a day. Cause you're not sitting in front of a computer as a salesperson, your, your car is your mobile office sometimes. 
Well, that's exactly right. And so let me, that just, that's a great segue into um, another, uh, and I'm sorry, my ear got too big for the, uh, for the headphones here because <laughs> the headphones are in my ear. Um, so that, that really is a great segue into this whole office thing. And um, I guess, how long has it been? About a year and a half, um, you, uh, you, you decided that you needed to, to make a move. We talked about it. We even partnered at a deeper level. And uh, you and mm -hmm. I got together uh, under one umbrella. And it was at that point where this whole notion of an office uh, became, you know, the question, right? And uh, mm -hmm. so the, yeah. the, the idea behind where we are now is that we're virtual. And we believe that the real estate business can be operated virtually uh, and that these big monuments that brokers build to themselves known as market centers are really unnecessary because they're empty most of the time. And people who yeah. really do have teams want to move the heck out of there because they don't want all the new agents running around coattail coaching, trying to get coattail coaching and, and catch them in the bathroom or in the coffee room on break and ask them how the heck they got so good, right? And how they're doing this and doing that. So typically the big teams will have offices that nobody else can get into for that reason. But what we did right. is we looked at, at this and said, you know, there's an advantage for us here. We looked at this platform and we said, you know what? Because I know that deep down you guys wanted to really grow and you had aspirations of, of growing outside of your geographic footprint there in Victoria. And so what we've done is, is we've been able to open those doors and take down the barriers that have occurred in the past. So can you speak uh, to the audience a little bit and kind of share with them your thoughts on the benefits of the change that you made about a year and a half when you decided that it was appropriate to look at a different way to set up your business? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, being virtual, you're right, is huge for a number of reasons. Um, <clears throat> you know, one thing is that once you figure out the models, um, our, our CEO of our brokerage, Glenn Sanford, said, you know, if you're solving problems, solve for 100 times the problem that you have. And you, you, it will truly, truly be scalable if you can do that. And so the physical model just doesn't allow you to do that. I mean, if you wanted to grow a giant team, you'd have to actually, if you're bricks and mortar, you'd have to actually get in and out of office spaces to be able to grow. So that's one thing. And growing beyond the geographical model is perfect. Like we've got an agent up in Nanaimo. She's able to participate in all the training. She's able to come to all the office meetings. Um, she's able to be a part of the team and the culture. Um, and and, and doesn't, she doesn't have to come down to Victoria. I mean, it's a two hour drive for that particular market center. Um, it also allowed us to get, you know, people like you involved. I mean, I know our team talks to you at least once a month and you're able to coach and train us all the way from Texas. So there's there's no more boundaries or borders. And, and you know, if somebody in your market area isn't there, doesn't have something that you need. You can go anywhere across North America and get what you need and collaborate with the top people across North America. Um, I know some of the teams in our brokerage that we look up to are in Vancouver. Um, there's opportunity to mastermind. There's opportunity to um, share ideas and share uh, uh, best practices and, and, you know, things that we're using and technologies with each other. And, you know, we can do it just like this. Well, that, that really opens up a whole new thought about uh, a real estate business and a team. And I, you and I have had this conversation yeah. numerous times about we no longer need to think of the team that's in our little box here. What we need to do is really think about how we can um, impact other areas really all over North America. And, you know, I've got agents that I've partnered with in almost all 50 states now. And it's amazing because the leverage and the scalability that this platform gives us uh, enables us to deliver a super high value proposition. In fact, you might recall mm -hmm. that Glenn said at one point um, that his goal was, his mission in life was to deliver so much value at the brokerage that it would be irresponsible yeah. uh, of an agent to hang their license anywhere else. So that's the level that we play and this is NFL. I mean, we are, you know, it's on like Donkey Kong as we like to say and uh, yeah. you know, so so we're out there. But the reality is is that the proof is in the pudding and you're growing your team and your footprint um, and you're able to impact the lives of a lot of other people now. And and as I like to say, we you and I and Greg have focused a lot 
um, uh, recently, and, and we're going to focus more on leadership and self-leadership. And, you know, the goal here being to have leaders develop leaders underneath them. And that's the true um, vision of scalability. If you can get people from un out from underneath that glass ceiling, which is the traditional team model, which is broken, no question about it. I'm sorry. Um, it is no longer uh, about you know setting up a team in the traditional method. If you do, you are cutting your nose off to spite your face. And the reason is, is because retention needs to start day one and you've got to give people the opportunity to self-actualize and to be the best that they can be. And if you're not providing that kind of an opportunity for people who are under you or working with you or your partners, then you are at a severe disadvantage in the real estate game at this stage. Wouldn't you agree with that? Patricia. Absolutely. That's it's 100 percent, you know, the, the issue with the old brokerage model. Um, and then, I mean, you know, you've got all these bricks and mortar organized or, or offices and they take a tremendous amount of money to run. Right. So there's resource. I mean, you just just put turning the lights on, having cleaners, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And none of it's really increasing the bottom line of, of um, well, the agent or the or the broker. It just means that everybody's got to produce more to pay for this thing that isn't actually increasing everybody's bottom line. So I think that it's important to remember. And, you know, kind of going back to agents and where their time is best spent, really their time is best spent in the field. And I think if you've got technology supporting your agents to be more effective in the field, to help them do video previews, to help them get into showings, um, you know, at the drop of a dime so that you can uh, be out with a client, they see a house they really love and you can get into it faster and before everybody else. I know our market's really competitive. So if we can get people into properties faster, we're giving our clients a competitive advantage with stuff like that. So the more technology that we have that's actually helping agents do their job better in the field, the better off we are, the better we can service our clients, um, you know, as opposed to just worrying about certain things that maybe aren't, isn't helping the industry at all. Wow. I, I mean, I couldn't have put that any better. And I'm just going to maybe uh, take off on that a little bit and just add, you know, the technology is really important. Uh, I'll say mm -hmm. that proprietary technology is not always the best. Um, and I mean, I can promise you that um, just because it's proprietary doesn't mean it's world class, best of breed or anything else. And so you have to be very careful and selective um, about which technologies you want to develop yourself and which technologies you want to partner with. You're not going to be able to compete with Oracle on a database. I hate to say that, but and that also comes down to like KB Core with us. Uh, and mm -hmm. to try to go out and recreate that wheel. You know, the CRM business has been the holy grail of the real estate business forever, and everybody's tried to, you know, to have a hand in it at, at creating the, the one thing that is going to take the place of everything else in the world, and it's not gonna happen, unfortunately. <laughs> we have too many, too many islands of information, too many disparate systems. We've got, you know, a thousand different ML. I mean, it's just, it's virtually impossible to do that. Um, and at the end of the day, brokerage is, um, are really not what drives this business, is it? it? Isn't it really about the agents themselves, Patricia? Absolutely. It's about the agents and empowering the agents so that they're not running around, you know, like with their heads cut off trying to figure out what they can do to service people better. It's about supporting them so they can be their, their best selves when they show up and be present, be checked in and really be in service of the people that they're out here that they're supposed to be working with and helping every day. Amen. So uh, I, I have a question for you, and I'm sure the audience would like to hear your input on this too. So we've been able to double your business every year for the last three years. Uh, what do you yeah. see? What's your, what are your future plans here? I know that since we've uh, changed platforms uh, and introduced a couple of new pillars of income into your business, including revenue share and, and stock now, uh, that your vision of what you can become has gotten a lot bigger. Can you, can you just, uh, can, I'm going to ask you to give us your BHAG. What's your big, hairy, audacious goal for the next 12 months? Well, my BHAG for the next 12 months is to now double our agent count. So, so you know, we were talking about doubling the business from the uh, client side of the business, but now I want to double the business from the agent side of the business over the next 12 months. And that also means coming up with solutions that really really empower agents. Um, we've been big, like you mentioned on the convert uh, lead conversion training. It's like having agents go out there and have be loaded up with confidence. We, um, we train four times a week, uh, four hours a week on just 
handling objections, how to get that lead conversion up. Because if you're spending money to bring the leads through the front door, you want to make sure that you're converting as many of them as possible. And you want to make sure that you're going out there with confidence and saying the right things to people. So we spend a lot of time on that. We do um, two role play sessions a week. Um, we do like a Tuesday night call night every single Tuesday where we all get together and we can all hear each other on the phones. Um, and that just builds a great energy, a great culture. Uh, we're accountable to each other. We support each other that way. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to expand that to a lot more agents because like you said, there's a lot of lonely islands up there and this business can be a lot of fun if you're surrounded by the right people. Um, you've got the right energy and coaching and training in the room. You can, you can knock it out of the park. I, I love the way you said it's kind of like spreading the love and speaking of spreading the love if you're out there in the audience hit that heart button if you like what you're hearing today <laughs> give us some likes give us some love here uh, we're doing this for you guys uh, Patricia we're gonna take just a very very short break and when we come back I'm gonna ask you to stick around uh, because when we come back uh, I'm gonna talk about a specific tool that I know you used extensively in your business and we're gonna introduce this to the audience here so give us just one second here we're gonna take a quick pause for the cause and then when we come back you're gonna hear all about my secret tool to really help you blow out your sales uh, conversions uh, on, on your next uh, listing presentation and, and uh, buyer conversion call. So we'll be right back. All righty, righty. It's time to get back, folks. And here we are. And uh, just again, uh, I want to remind you that we have Patricia Katiki from Victoria, British Columbia, all the way down. Man, I'll tell you what, that's a long way, but the internet brings us all together. This reminds me, we do our, our calls uh, on Zoom and, and we have uh, training and stuff in the world uh, virtually and so forth. It's, it's incredible how this wonderful technology has been able to, uh, to allow us to communi communicate, collaborate, and, and, and really develop a whole business model uh, around being virtual. So what I wanna do now, and Patricia, by the way, thank you again, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, soon. Uh, we'll be in Orlando next week, by the way, so there will be no show. Um, unfortunately, I had booked that before we started doing the shows, but uh, it's our shareholders meeting at EXP, and and uh, if you're going to be in Orlando, look us up because we're going to be we're going to be there, uh, ready to talk. All right, um, what I have in front of me now, and those of you familiar with a tool called DISC, uh, will remember that there are uh, there's a personality profile that uh, you take. I think Tony Robbins uh, actually offers his for free, and and it's a great tool to help us understand behavior, and you know behavior in selling and. I'm gonna ask C3 a little bit about this. He's uh, one of the first things that we started talking about when he decided to get into the real estate business was how to develop uh, your sales skills and so forth. And I know that uh, we did quite a bit of uh, study on DISC and how important it is to do a personality match. Um, when you're making your calls and so forth, uh, tell me how finding matching and mirroring and all that stuff plays into your ability to, to convert a call. It's, uh, it's a great question. Uh, it's actually very important. I think it's a huge um, asset if you know what you're talking about and who you're talking to. Um, as far as the, you know, your body language, as far as how to approach them, and it really helps me uh, get to that point of the conversion. So. All right, well you said body language, and you know, if you study, if you study NLP or, or uh, the science of human communication, what you learn is, is that there are um, several things that impact, really three, that impact your ability to communicate. And Patricia, I know you know what these are. Number one is the words that you use, right? And the words contribute only about 7% to communication. So if you're using email or text or anything like that without any type of tonality or where people can see you, you're only communicating to a very limited part of what, you, what your ability is. Now, if it's on the phone where you have tonality, and if you can, you know, talk to somebody and, and boy, I'll tell you, Jordan Belfort, I know he was a, he was not a very admired guy, but he really perfected the art of, 
uh, converting people uh, on the phone. And he has a program, a great program, the Straight Line Sales Persuasion Method, uh, once he got out of jail, that he uh, he created. And he's really, let me tell you what, I know what you're thinking, but listen, it's uh, you can use these tools in a good way or in a bad way. And I always, you know, I want to stress that you don't want to use these tools in a way to get in trouble or get anybody else in trouble. But learning how to communicate. So tonality represents about 38% of the, the quality of your communication skill. But what that leaves is, and the most important part, is your body language. And so body language is responsible for about 55% of your ability to communicate with somebody. They can tell if you're sitting like this, you know, if you're open and so forth. And so when you're out in front of a customer, it's really, or a client, it is really important to understand the physiology of the conversation and also to understand them and to understand how their mind works. And that's how you get into DISC. And uh, Patricia, tell me, um, when you guys are hiring, uh, and you have people do the DISC assessment. Can you talk a little bit about, tell the audience how you use the DISC in your hiring, especially on the sales side? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, on the sales side, it's really interesting because you know um, you can have a wide variety of personalities that can go out and sell a whole bunch of real estate. Um, but for us, the way we use the DISC is we try to understand, you know, if we're hiring somebody that's a high D, then we actually, when we're t when we're coaching for lead conversion or you know what what to say when you're out talking to people, we actually have to train high Ds to slow it down and to actually check in with people. Um, if you get somebody that's like a high I, you won't be able to shut them up. They'll just keep talking and talking for <laughs> forever. I got some I got some people in mind. <laughs> I got some high I. I know a couple of tequilas. The I goes way yeah. up. I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Huh. Um, but it's interesting because we're able to say to people, okay, look, you, you're a high D personality. So here's how you're going to have to react to people on the phone uh, or on the phone. I mean, that's a big one for us, but in person to you at an open house. Um, and it also allows us to help them understand the person they're talking to. So um, you can't, you don't, you know, so for example, I'm going to use D because it's, it's on the top of my mind here, but those people are want to going to want to drive and get to the point really quickly and just close fast. Um, where that's not going to work with somebody who's really analytical and wants to take the time to have a process and understand all the information and want to be given, you know, a whole bunch of data to look at before they can make a decision. Um, so we have to, you know, let that D personality know not to get impatient, to be there and to be prepared for, you know, somebody that's analytical or somebody who's bubbly and just wants to talk about how their family is doing and things like that. Wow, so it helps them understand yeah. each other and themselves. I mean, you hit it, you, you hit the nail on the head. In a nutshell, I mean, I think that just really sums up what this is all about. So if you're in the audience and wanna get a copy of this, this is, uh, this is my cheat sheet right here to behavioral selling skills. Um, all you have to do is go to www.getcliffsnotes.com and uh, you can download a copy. Uh, Patricia, we're just we're at the, the the bottom of our time here, and and uh, boy, yeah. we could this this call. I imagine we could go on for a couple of days here, but, <laughs> but unfortunately, Forever, Travis, yeah. Travis has got some business after this. He's got to take care of, right, Travis? Oh man, look, right. I could listen to this all day, though. Honestly, <laughs> is this is really good, good information. I, I hope we're filling your cup. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, this is really good information. Honestly, <laughs> good. Well, hey, but, but uh, I will say something just, just before we go because I know I know people see this stuff and they think, oh, you know. I don't understand how it applies to my sales. And it's so crucial because if you understand the person on the other end, you're going to know exactly how you need to show up so that you can maintain that person and, you know, take them through the process instead of head bunting with clients and thinking, oh, the clients just don't know what I want them to do. You no, know, you have to understand how you can be of service to them. And, and you know what, just to piggyback on that, if you can learn this stuff and internalize it, it'll even help your marriage or your, and your relationships with your kids and your family, right? I'm yeah. telling you, it's it's really good. It's really amazing. Okay, well, Patricia, I uh, again, thank you so much. It's so exciting to have you uh, on our fourth show here. Uh, you are one. I you are my hero as a coach, and I'm I'm just so grateful to to have the opportunity to work with you and just see this tremendous growth and productivity that that you've experienced um i mean you're going to be in the real estate hall of fame here uh i know it <laughs> and uh i'm just so excited to be a, a you know a partner with you and and have some small part in in what's uh what's happening in your business and your lives uh it's really an honor and a, a pleasure and so thank you again so much for being on the show with us today 
Uh, it's it's such a pleasure. We'll we'll hook up again in person soon, and I can't wait. Uh, so much love uh, from Texas all the way up to uh, Victoria, British Columbia, and uh, I'll also say uh, thanks to my co-host today, uh, C3, uh, my son. Thanks Always so much great for to having have me. him. My my golf buddy here just got off Preston Trails, and then also uh, I can't forget my my uh, uh, co-pilot pilot back there that's that's keeping this thing flying. Uh, Travis, uh, you are you are uh, the man of the hour every hour, and we're so grateful to have you as uh, a, a part of the show today too. And also, uh, uh, my producer, you know who you are. Uh, and so, if you would please, just everybody, have a great uh, rest of your week. And uh, we're going to take a week, uh, a day off uh, next week, but the show will be back uh, the following week. And so, we'll look forward to seeing seeing you there. In the meantime, we'll see you either at the top. How does it go, Jay? Or from, from the, the top. top.